Hello, I'm Steve Terranova from Brandywine Urology here in Wilmington, Delaware. We're also in Newark and Middletown, Delaware. And uh, I'm Adam Raven. I'm a radiation oncologist at Christiana Care. And we're doing a prostate seed implant today with I-125 radioactive sources. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is we localize the prostate on the video screen in the transverse mid-gland image. And then we uh, place two anchoring needles on the outside lateral edges of the gland. Okay. Good. Perfect. Uh, Dr. Terranova is then going to switch to a longitudinal length so that we can identify the prostate basin apex as well as the needle edge, which is exactly where we did. I wouldn't yeah. go any farther. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, Avi, let us know when you're ready to get a sagittal image. Yeah. Capture. So we capture a sagittal image to identify the position of the urethra relative to the bladder neck and the apex. Okay. We're ready to capture images. You ready, Av? Yeah. So once we put our anchor needles, we capture the images. Okay. Uh, okay, that's our base. Okay, capture. Okay. Capture. Okay. Capture. Okay. Capture. Okay. Capture. 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 Okay. That's it. Okay. Ready? Let's go up and in a half CM. Okay. Perfect. Good. Yep. Up and in a half deep prime, C prime. Uh, more, more yeah. uh, yeah. Good. See where we are. Good. You like it? Yeah. Okay. Love it. Okay. Straight down. Straight down. One CM to two. Beautiful. Nice. Down to one. All the way to one? Yeah. It looks like we have room. It looks like we have room too. Yeah. Count to three. Good. Yeah. Perfect. What, you like that? You're okay with that one over there? Oh, yeah. Okay. No, I'll fix it. It's fine. All right. Come straight across. I'm going to go one centimeter or half. Let's go. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. See that first, right? Yeah. Okay. And then what you're going to do is oh, going to come up to one and a half C prime, B prime. Okay. Just like that. Okay. I'm going to need two more after that. Yeah. Perfect. Good. Yeah, perfect. Perfect. Dr. Raven, can you just tell us about what you and Dr. Terranova are, the general implantation needle pattern, and the referral of the central needles? Yeah, so generally Dr. Terranova places a majority of the needles around the periphery of the gland, walking at anywhere from one centimeter to five millimeter intervals. And essentially that's the majority of the needles. And then we look to place central needles in a box-shaped formation, sort of around the urethra, at least one centimeter away. So the primary pattern is primarily a peripheral loading. So I just put in two, three C and E. Maybe go down a centimeter from that. Uh, go down to two, two C, C and, e. yeah. and that's it. That's right. Two. Good. Uh, so, okay. the, so the next thing Dr. Terranova is going to do is to get a longitudinal picture and make sure all the needles are at a submucosal position below the bladder. Yeah. It's working yep. really nicely. Yep. Yeah. These are all pretty good. Mm -hmm. That's good. Is that hitting something? Is that hitting something? Yeah, I think it's either okay. It feels like it's hitting something around the waist. Okay, I'll just keep that there. Yeah, I'll keep, yeah, maybe you have to play with that one a little bit. Yeah. Okay, well, we're going to pop that balloon. Which one is that? It's probably this one. Yeah. Okay, yeah, we're good. We're good. All right. What is this one down here? Yeah. Perfect. It's perfect. It's perfect. All right. Perfect. All okay. Right. Okay. Great. Mm -hmm. 
section it looks like you're pushing all your needles all the way to the base right now. Yeah, so using the uh, using the micro touch, which has a cradle, allows me to maneuver the cradle from right to left to look at the needle tips and to push it right below where the bladder neck is. So if you figure the edge of the balloon is here, the bladder neck is probably right below it, and so the prostate is really starting right at that almost a centimeter below the balloon. We uh, we can tug on the balloon to make sure that it's at at the base. And that's exactly where we want it. So, so we can walk all the way through all the needle positions. And you can see here one of the needles is slightly deviating up. So I can put some downward pressure and then reposition it so it's more in line with the other needles. So again, I can manipulate the needles so that they're not deviating. So at the base, we really try not to uh, implant right at the bladder neck. So there's a little bit of a median lobe here. So we try to be cognizant of that. Okay. Do we know when you're ready for needles? While you've been perfectly positioning your needles, physicist uh, Avi has been contouring and getting a rough definition of the prostate and the prostate gland. Yeah, so it's it's sort of like layering two procedures onto one at the same time so that you improve efficiency, decrease the time. Um, we don't find that much change in the prostate volume if it's done quickly. Obviously, if it takes a long time, you're going to get some intraprostatic swelling, which changes the volume to some extent by the time you implant it, but that's sort of expected and sort of built into the procedure. Okay. All right. Uh, first needle row is four Charlie primed and David primed. Okay. Next is four, three and a half boy primed, echo primed. Okay. Next row is row three, big boy, big Charlie, big echo, big Frank. Okay. Next row is two, Big Boy, Big Charlie, Big Echo, Big Frank. Last row, excuse me, one and a half is Charlie Primed and David Primed. Okay. And row one is Big Boy, Big Charlie, Big Echo, Big Frank. Okay. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, eighteen needles.
So at this time, it looks like Avni's identifying the actual needle positions with the estimated needle positions. That's correct. Now you want to go to satchel image again. Okay. Satchel. I would say, yeah, that's right. So bottom of the prostate, sort of right there. This is to go down. Yeah, I'd bring it down just a little bit. And you can see the top of the prostate is right there. So yeah, so come down about two millimeters. I just move the whole front. No, I leave it where he is, go back to sagittal. And just pull the whole thing down a little bit. Yep. Great. Okay. Yep. This one is okay. I think you're you're almost spot on here. Now I would just move the urethra, move the whole thing down. Yep. Uh, now here's the position of the urethra, uh, right there. So if if you just bring the entire, just move the whole thing down like one millimeter, right there. That's perfect. You're dead on. Okay. Brilliant. Okay, let's do the plan. The plan takes about less than three seconds. As you're looking at the bank, you just take us through what you're what you're looking for, uh, uh, some of the key metrics that you'd like to use. So Obviously, we, uh, I re-reviewed the prostate volume, um, and uh, we look at the needle positions in real time in the implant view. Uh, we go to the transverse imaging. make sure that our needle positions are superimposed onto the computer generated needles and then we can walk through the gland to look at how the needle positions are in within the prostate to make sure that the prostate volume is correct and look at the accuracy of the placement We're able to walk all the way down to the apex of the gland and look at the needles to see if we need to reposition anything or if we have good coverage all the way at the apex and at the base. And it looks like we have good coverage. The next thing we do is we're going to um, look again at the prostate volume itself. And you can demagnify it or bring it up to a larger position to look at it. And you can make 
make some micro adjustments to the volume. So the next thing is we're going to add a margin structure to it of three millimeters all the way around it, except zero millimeters at the prostate interface with the rectal wall. Okay, and we're ready to do our planning. So this is an inverse planning algorithm that takes into account predetermined dose objectives and constraints uh, that are mapped into the prescribed dose of 145 gray. Uh, the plan takes into account the parameters of the needles that were placed and stays within those parameters. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is make sure that we know what our seed strength is. So we go to source placement mode, and for the purposes of simplicity, I just want to see a couple of the isodose curves, the 150, 125, and 100, and the 90%. Uh, the next thing is we want to look at our seed strength is 0.451. Okay, and the total number of seeds available for implant. We do that. Okay. Again, making sure that the when we do the planning, that only the live current needles that we placed are being um, used for this plan. If you turn this off uh, and run a plan, it will add some more needles. So you can allow the computer to do a complete optimization, uh, but by manually placing the needles ahead, it forces it to stay within the constraints that you've given it. And this is primarily a modified peripheral loading, but it's inverse planning. Look at our dose rules, which we've reviewed, and it weights the dose rules again from zero to 10, uh, and it tells uh, the computer knows that my main objective is to have a certain dose of the prostate receiving uh, a certain percentage of the prescribed dose. Great. And we'll start the plan, and then the first iteration is completed in 1.2 seconds. So we look to see if the objectives are met, and they are, but we will make some adjustments to uh, bring it into within the dose constraints that we like. Uh, the only objective uh, that is high is the V150 prostate is above 60. We'll try to cool that down. And the uh, V100 rectum is uh, at 0.62, which was in, is within our constraint, but we try to get it below 0.5. So coming to the top of the gland, looking at the symmetry, we try to keep the dose cool around the bladder neck. So our D90 is 180. We like to be a little bit lower, somewhere around 170 or between 160 and 170. So we're going to cool that down a little bit. Uh, I try to limit the number of seeds in the middle of the gland. And you can see the nice thing about this plan is you can do some dose painting so that 150% of the prescribed dose is in regions where cancer normally sits in the prostate. If there's a dominant intraprostatic lesion that was identified, you can also hot load that. We know that there was a dominant lesion on the right side, so you can see that 150% of the prescribed dose is within the dill, mm -hmm. uh, the dominant intraprostatic lesion. So you can manipulate the dose through the planning to get a hot loading on the peripheral lateral zones, which is a nice feature. So now we've cooled down the V150 prostate and looking at the plan, uh, all of our dose objectives have been met. The V150 urethra is nearly zero. The V125 urethral dose is less than 20%. And we were able to get a V150 below 60% with a V100 of 98%. So we've met most of our objectives. We've met all of our objectives. And then we're going to review one more time. Uh, again, I like to limit dose to the outer edges of the gland and have the dose pushed in.
have a ready to implant. Great. So the iteration and the manual manipulation takes less than five minutes generally. That's great. While you're getting crook, can you just tell us a little bit more about your thoughts on bladder neck dosing and, and, uh, and your thoughts on how it's related to bladder toxicity? Yeah, so in fact, uh, Memorial Sloan Kettering has published uh, data demonstrating that if you can limit uh, the bladder neck dose um, below the prescribed dose, uh, that, that there's a a significant reduced risk of uh, both um, acute and uh, sustained urinary uh, toxicity. So it's good to know where the bladder neck is. Now, some programs allow you to uh, draw the urethra at the bladder neck as a separate structure, which you can do. Uh, we just look at the isodose curves around the bladder neck without drawing an additional urethral structure to get a sense of where the urethral dose is and try to limit that. Okay, so we're ready to rock and roll. Okay. First needle is four Charlie primed. So again, I like to have the um, table at an angle, so I have everything in access to me, so we try to be efficient. We have a um, wet four by four that I like to place up here that we can clean the trocar when we need to. Okay. All right. Let's see if we put the fourth one right there. Here? Yeah, but then move it forward a little bit. Right there. That should be good. Okay, we're good. We'll do that. Uh, the reason I'm doing that is that this gentleman has a dominant intraprostatic lesion on the right side. So uh, the nice thing about this new seed method with real-time planning, it gives you an opportunity to do changes on the fly. One. Two. Next one is uh, four David Prime. Four David Prime, three seats. Two okay. seats Good. See if you add a fourth there. Actually, no. Just do three. Okay, next is three big echo. This is a central needle. Three echo, two seats, three seats. Next is two big echo. Two echo, two seats, two seats. Yeah. 
Next is three and a half Echo Prime. Three and a half Echo Prime, full seat, full and full. Next is three big frack. Three frack, all six, three frack. Oh, one, two. Next is uh, two big front. Two front of five to know. Next is one big frank. One frank, five in a row. Uh, we're going to put in four here, take the last one out. Okay, next is um, one big echo. One echo, three seats, one big screen. Next is uh, one and a half David Prime. Four six, two verse two. Eight, six. One. Okay, next is three big Charlie. Total two seats, three circuits. Next is two big Charlie. Two Charlie, three circuits. One big Charlie. One, two, 
Next is three and a half boy prime. Four in the four seats, two ways, two eights. is three big boys. Three seats, two boys, one of us. Two. Three. Dr. Raymond, as we're finishing up, is there a preferred needle order you'd like to go in? Left to right, seat to hand to post. Uh, it varies. Uh, sometimes it's on visibility. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes I go from you know uh, left to right, top row, next row, following row. Uh, there are times where I'll do um, central needles first mm -hmm. that remove some of the artifact, and it makes the peripheral loading a little bit easier to visualize. So it just depends on the prostate, depends on the visualization and the needle placement, but um, no particular order. Okay, two big boy. Two boy, five year old. One left. One, two. Well, last needle. This one, I think. Five, one, five in a row. Yeah, I think it's going to be four in this one. More ambitious. Take out the last one. Four. Okay. Let's look at the final dose. Good. Perfect. Dr. Graham, while you're staying up, can you just explain uh, if you're going to do cystoscopy and a, a fluoro, and what do you use those tools for? So um, our urologist, uh, Dr. Terranova, will do a cystoscopy to make sure that the urethra is clear of any blood clots, that the bladder shows no blood clots, uh, in addition to make sure there's no migration of any seeds into the urethra or the bladder uh, wall that can be retrieved with the cystoscope. And also to uh, make sure that it's safe for the patient to have his catheter removed and to be able to go home without a catheter. We do a fluoroscopy primarily to look at the positioning of all of the seeds to make sure there's no significant migration uh, away from the prostate. There are occasional uh, times where you can have a seed migrate outside the prostate and it needs to be documented, uh, both for NRC purposes as well as for dosimetry purposes. Great. Great. Thank you, Dr. Raven. Yeah.